He's calling in from Dodgers camp today. How are you, Tom Verducci? I am well. I'm actually watching Clayton Kershaw throwing live BP to Yasiel Puig. <sighs> Here's a tip for you, Rich. This, yes, sir. This Kershaw guy. Yes. I think he's got a chance to make the team. You do? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, that's the sort of stuff that we want in a Honda Insider report from you, sir, and I appreciate you, you calling in and giving us those two cents. All right. Uh, I don't know what I'm more surprised by, the, the counting the non-pitching change mounds visits or after all this talk of the pitch clock, it's not going to be implemented this season. What, what, what's the scoop on that one, Tom? Yeah, I'm with you on the latter. Listen, after all the talk about the pitch clock and the commissioner acting tough, he's going to implement pace of play rules. To me, this was a big nothing burger. You know, six mound visits. The average last year was eight. Um, and don't forget, there are certain provisions in here that allow teams to go beyond six. If there's a pinch hitter, you can go out again. If you're crossed up on signs, you can go out again. So where's the gain? I mean, the biggest problem in today's game is the dawdling that goes on between pitches. And that's gone up almost three seconds in a decade, which adds up to 13 minutes of pure dead time in between pitches. What's being done about that? Next to nothing. So I think when you're watching a game in 2018, it's going to look a lot like 2017 with, I, I think it's a distraction now to be keeping track of these mound visits. Like, what, what is a mound visit? If the first baseman goes three-quarters of the way to the mound to talk to the pitcher about bunt defense, is that a mound visit? Will the other team be screaming, hey, that's a mound visit? Uh, yeah, I, I Listen, any little bit helps, but it's not going to make a dent in the problem. I mean, just after Joe Girardi is no longer the manager of the Yankees, Tom. I mean, this is that's the you know those are the mound visits that I think they're trying to eliminate. Is Sanchez coming out every two seconds to try and talk to the pitcher uh, or encouraged to do that? Um, that that I guess is what they're trying to get out of the game, right, Tom? Yeah. So yeah, Sanchez comes to mind. Wilson Contreras with the Cubs come to mind. Uh, these guys are continually going out to the mound. In most cases, it's because they need to change the signs, and a lot of times the signs get very complicated, and they need to verbally confirm with the pitcher that they're on the same page. So it will make a difference there. I've already talked with some clubs about they're going to have to go to more hand signals to say, hey, we're going to go to the second set of signs here. Mm. Uh, that. That will make a difference. Those catchers like Sanchez and Contreras, they're going to have to adjust their game with this limit. Yeah, because I assume these are the ones who are going to be fined, right? Players who consistently or flagrantly violate the time limits will be subject to progressive discipline for just cause by the office of the commissioner. I'm reading right yeah, there from I, you the, know, the rule. I don't know what that means, though. I mean, what kind of fines are we talking about? You know, Remember, in 2015, they had that rule where the hitter had to keep two feet in the batter's box. And for the first couple of months, they started sending out warning letters, and then they started fining people. There were actually some hitters who said, figure out how many at-bats I'm going to get, figure out what the fine is, multiply that, I'll pay in advance. Because the fine really is not going to bother a lot of these guys. They figured out that fining people does not really change behavior. Um, so I'd like to know what these fines are going to be, how aggressive they're going to be implementing them. Does baseball need to be fixed, Tom? Well, it doesn't need to be fixed because it's not broken. I think more people consume baseball in more ways than ever before. The last two postseasons have been unbelievable. There's a lot of momentum. Uh, young stars, I mean, other sports would kill for so many young stars in the game that baseball has right now. I think it just needs to adapt, Rich, to a coming generation of fans who have so many diversions to pick from that when the game slows down, their attention, their eyeballs are easily geared towards something else. And I think that's what – basically I call it modernizing or updating. Think of it as an update to your software. Just updating the game so that the game just moves quicker. But, no, it doesn't need to be fixed. Tom Verducci joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. What does the Hosmer signing mean to you? I like that signing. It reminds me a little bit um, of when the Nationals stepped up and got Jason Worth before they were good, but they could see good coming where it made sense. Uh, Hosmer is a guy, I think, when you give him that money, he's not going to change. This guy's a baseball rat, loves the game, uh, is an influencer in the clubhouse, bilingual guy. He, he has a lot of impact on a lot of different players, great work ethic. So, yeah, I think it fits to what – what San Diego wants to do. Their farm system is loaded right now. Uh, when this team gets good, he's going to be a part of it. 
So I, I like this deal. I really do. And I think last year, the year he had last year, with a little more power shows you that you may get more power out of Hosmer than what we've seen in the past. And is J.D. Martinez enough for the Red Sox? Uh, it was mandatory. I thought it was really necessary for the team to go out and buy power. And I didn't think there was a fallback position. And I think for J.D., uh, maybe Arizona on a short-term deal. I, I just couldn't see them going uh, to the dollars Boston could have. So to me, he had one place to go, and the Red Sox had one bat to go get. And it was a marriage we, we waited four months to happen. But I think it had to happen for both. So, yeah, it's a really good signing for them. I, I still like the Yankees. I think the Yankees are absolutely loaded, uh, especially with depth besides, you know, two big power hitters. Uh, it's going to be tough for Boston to, to run down New York. Tom Verducci joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So which, which J.D., Martinez or Drew, when it's all said and done, is going to have a bigger impact on the history of the Boston Red Sox? Tom, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, you know, I think J.D., like a lot of guys, goes to Boston. You, ha- you need to get off to a good start. And <laughs> what I'd be concerned about is his power is mostly all to right field. He's not a right-handed pole hitter who's going to be pounding balls over the wall or off the wall. Hitting the ball the other way as a right-handed hitter in Fenway early in the season, that's a tough draw. You know, the ball doesn't carry. It's a long way out to those bullpens. You know, his strength doesn't play to the ballpark. And like New York, like Philadelphia, Boston, man, you, you, that first impression is huge. You, know, you have to get off on a good foot there. So um, I'd like to say Red Sox fans need a little patience with J.D. early in the season, but that's not their strong suit. What's the talk in Dodger camp, Tom? I mean, what, what is a team that came oh so close and has immense expectations about it? What do they talk about on, on February 20th? Uh, they know they're good enough to win the World Series. Now it's, you know, getting so close, similar to what Kansas City had in 14. Uh, it's a motivating factor. They know how to get there. They just know how to they have to find a way to finish it. Uh, it's, again, extremely deep, Rich. I mean, we, we think about Dodgers. You start with Kershaw and you say, well, they kind of mix and match with their rotation. But that's what they do. They have so many options in the bullpen, so many options in the rotation that, you know, you're not going to see anybody other than Kershaw pitch 180 innings. It works for them. They're incredibly crowded in the outfield. Good old boy, uh, friend Matt Kemp is back. How about that? Matt Kemp it's back in the Dodger uniform. Unbelievable. Might actually make this team, but uh, it is a crowded roster, I'll tell you. There is, there is established big leaguers everywhere in this camp. And yet, Houston's still a favorite to repeat. What do you think? I think so. I mean, Listen, throw out the fact that this is now the longest period in World Series history without a repeat champion, right, going back to the Yankees teams. And just that alone tells you it's hard to do in this day and age. But if you didn't know that and you just looked at rosters, you've got to go with Houston. I'm sorry. I mean, that, that rotation is terrific. It's deep. Uh, it's the one rotation that's going to give you a lot of innings. And offensively, I, I think the best in baseball top to bottom so i love their manager I, I, I love their manager too tom i love mean him. I, I think if there's anybody that knows he's probably studying about 15 different ways to mentally prepare them or going through um people who have done it before i bet aj hinch is going to be as ready as as any of those guys on that team too i, I love you know, that guy. I, I, would, I would agree with that rich i mean he's sort of like the template of what you want in a modern manager today but you know, I'll, I'll rewind the clock to 12 months being in Cubs camp last year. And they got Joe Madden, Theo Epstein, Jed Hoyer. They're saying all the right things about staying off of that slow start that uh, world champions coming back to try to repeat face. And they still got to the all-star break two games under 500. It's just human nature. They did everything they could from, you know, kind of slow playing their starting pitchers in spring training to staying on top of them about being focused. And they still got out of the block slow. So, Sometimes human nature is uh, is your biggest enemy when it comes to repeating. Well, Tom, unfortunately, I've reached my question uh, count as uh, the commissioner's office told me I, I had 
only 10 questions for you, so unfortunately. Well, it's early in spring training. You've got to build up your question strength. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Tom. Great chatting as All always. Right, Rich, thanks. You, you got it. Again, live spring training game schedule begins on MLB Network Friday featuring the Nationals and the aforementioned Astros at 1 Eastern time. Go ahead and visit MLBnetwork.com for both schedules. And that was the Honda Insider Report. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.